semifinals. Tickets are hard to come by for this championship event. Over 22,000 are prepared for a showdown of a nation's best. This family reunion showcases four teams very familiar with these settings. Our first contest features a rematch of last year's national championship. It's the Connecticut Huskies back again at the top, facing off against a perennial power, the Tennessee Lady Vols. Our second matchup features the Stanford Cardinal, winners of 23 straight, taking on the Lady Bulldogs of Georgia. The first game features a matchup of gritty guards. Tennessee is led by senior Michelle Marciniak, and for Connecticut, their floor leader is Jen Rosati. You're sure to see two fierce competitors. Hello again, everyone. Alongside Mimi Griffin and Nancy Weaver Klein, I'm Robin Roberts. For the first time ever, a repeat the same four Final Four teams, six national titles, and 21 Final Four appearances between them. Mimi, it's like a family reunion around here. And Robin, that's a great analogy because just like at a family reunion, there's been a lot of ribbing and teasing among the coaches at the press conferences. They have been spicy. And you know what else is, that's interesting? They each posture themselves as the underdog. Now, how can we possibly have more? Underdogs. Even the defending champions feel that they are underdogs, Nancy. In a short amount of time, it's turned into quite a rivalry with Tennessee. Well, when you think of rivalry, you think of teams that have had a lot of tradition and played each other for years. This is three games in 12 months. I think Gino Oriema said it best at the press conference the other day. Winning the title last year meant a lot, but beating Tennessee was very rewarding. I guess he's using Tennessee as the benchmark for success. And ladies, as you know, our first matchup features two games with elite programs. And for more on the stars to watch in this matchup, let's head to the two that will be calling the game for us, Ann Myers and Mike Thank you very much, Robin. Not only do we have outstanding teams here, but we have great individual players as well, like Carol Walters of Connecticut. Her coach, Gino Oriema, says she is the number one option in women's basketball. And who has felt over the last 10 years she has just dominated that position with her size at 6'7". But he's a little upset, and I think the UConn-Connecticut team is too. And they will use it as an incentive because Carol Walters did not make Kodak All-American this year. She's coming into the tournament averaging 19 shooting 63% from the floor. But she not only shoots the ball, she gets her team involved. She gets double, triple team, gets four players on her, and she can share the ball. She gets her teammates involved, but she is the first option. For Tennessee, Latina Davis has raised her scoring average from 12 to 18 points in the NCAA tournament, and she is right now in doing exactly what seniors are supposed to do. She really is, Mike. She is the, the silent leader on this team. And as really Davis goes, Tennessee goes. She can hit the 15-footer. She penetrates. They've got other great players on this team, but they need her to play strong. She had 12 points in the second half against Virginia, and they will need all 12 of it in this game. And those are just two of the star players that will be keeping an eye for you tonight in what should be a great game. Right now, let's get back to Robin. All right, Mike and Andy, thanks very much. The scene is set. Over 22,000 anticipating a clash of titans. It's an atmosphere full of excitement and suspense. UConn is opponent, other than Tennessee, history. Not since USC back in 1983 and 84 has a team repeated as national champions. Carol Walters, for one, would like to have an opportunity to change all that. There's a lot of emotion surrounding the tournament. Sometimes um, you get caught up in it. and uh, I mean, you wouldn't be human if, if you didn't have the the nervous feeling, the excited feeling. After losing last year's championship game, um, the returning players had put a, a hunger uh, in us to get back to the Final Four. Just what? Dear children, when your dad passed away, it was devastating, with so many decisions to make at a time when I felt so vulnerable. This morning, I met with our funeral director and made the arrangements for my funeral. His Reflections planning guide made everything easy. I even took care of the cost. I hope you will find these arrangements comforting. I know I do. Love, Mom. Call McAvoy Funeral Home today, serving Henry County best since 1901. 
Stability, selection, service. For over 50 years, Morgan Furniture has built a solid reputation for bringing you the best in quality home furnishings and floor covering. Brands like Broyhill, Bassett, Sealy, Lazy Boy, Rock City, and Meadowcraft provide for a large in-store selection. The staff at Morgan Furniture provides helpful advice, too, to guarantee your satisfaction. In-store financing is available, as well as free delivery. Morgan Furniture is proud of their reputation for stability, selection, and service. Craftsman hand tools, power tools, lawn and garden equipment on sale, and every gallon of paint on sale. But hurry, it all ends Saturday at Sears. We deliver great quality, time after time. Same, Same with, with Super 8. 8. Every room is comfortable. <laughs> and roomy! Super 8. Super 8. <laughs> Life's <laughs> great at Super 8. 8. For every loser with a winning dream. You could be a good team if you just play like a team. For everybody who's been told they'll never succeed. My grandmother plays better than you. Welcome to Sunset Park. This is going to be our year. From TriStar Pictures comes a story about standing up for who you are. What happened? I said I tried to shoot someone. We got some representation. Sunset Park. It's about respect. Rated R. At theaters April 26th. exclusive presentation of the NCAA Women's Final Four is brought to you by State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Michelle Marciniak's gutty East Regional Final helped seal Tennessee's ninth Final Four appearance. Back now to Ann Myers and Mike Patrick for tonight's first semifinal. All right, thank you, Robin. Back in the Charlotte Coliseum, a sellout crowd of 22,800. Now for the Perk Plus starting lineups. For Connecticut, winners of 20 straight, Jamel Elliott does all the tough work inside. She's the team's leading rebounder and number two all time for the Huskies. For Tennessee at 30 and 4, Shamiqua holds claw. The freshman not only holds the team in scoring and rebounding, but received the singular honor of being named an All-American in her first year. Pat Summit in her 22nd season has won 594 games in her career, including national championships in 87, 89, and 91. And Gino Oriema in his 11th year at UConn with a 34 and 3 record, entering the Final Four as the defending national champion. Record for Pat Summit, 594-133. Such a great tradition at Tennessee. 22 years and what she has accomplished. It was funny listening to Nancy and Mimi saying that all the coaches think that the underdog and Tennessee probably has the most experience because of Pat Summit, yet she has lost to all three of these teams that are in the Final Four. Three straight against UConn. Set to go in the first women's semifinal for the right to advance to the final four. And UConn controls Janelle Elliott the senior. Tennessee has started Tiffany Johnson the last two games Patch and Thompson started. Johnson came off the bench. And now Johnson has started. Walters with a miss. And back is Latina Davis. Gives it up to her senior. Johnson playing in her hometown, and she gets the first two points. Is that big for Tennessee to come out and score first? Tiffany Johnson is 6'4", the tallest player for Connecticut. Last time, Tennessee had a tough time controlling Walter. Nice drive inside by Nikisha Sales. Can't get the basket. Johnson has the rebound between two Connecticut players. A great start for her. Rebound and always a key. Tennessee maybe doesn't have the height, but they are very focused in this game. Abby Conklin, baseline jumper won't go. Walters clear. Here comes Rosado. Loves to put it up court. Gets it back to Sale. Switch. It's all created by penetration. Shooters 
touch. Shamiqua holds floor, averaging 16.3 points a game. After Tennessee played Connecticut this year and lost at Tennessee, Pat Summit talked to Shamiqua Holesclaw and said, look, you've got to step up. You disappeared towards the end of that game. And ever since, Holesclaw has played very, very well. This is Berube. Goes low sails. Nice move. Got the bucket. Both teams going inside. Tennessee trying to force maybe get Walters into foul trouble, but Connecticut likes to play that 2-3 matchup zone. Davis, trying to spin in the lane against Rosati, lost the ball on the way up into travel. The three times these teams have played very recent, last season, Connecticut won by 11 and took Tennessee's number one ranking. Then they won the national title by six. And this season, they came from behind to win by six. So they've got all that going for them. Down the lane, Barubi tries the scoop shot. Walter's got a hand on it, but knocked it out of bounds. Tennessee, a team that likes to play man to man. And there you see Carl Walters. As far as Connecticut offensively, talk about their first option, trying to get the ball into Walters, but we've seen in the tournament from Connecticut that other players have really stepped up their game and helped Walters out. Renee Laxton checks in as Shamiqua holds down. 17-34 to go first half. Walters when these two teams met earlier in the year, Laxton was out with a stress fracture in her hip, and she missed quite a few games. Big shot right there, and they're a different team, Tennessee. Marciniak with the three out of the corner, only shooting 18% this year, but that one looked great. In high school, she hit 225 trays, and since coming to Tennessee, really has not been the offensive scorer. Walters with a turnaround jumper where she likes to get the ball to begin with. 7 6 the Lady Vols, and pressure from UConn. Marciniak dribbled right into it. The steal by Rosati. Great dish to get it to Barubin. Rosati aware of everything on the court. Sales, 20 footer. Rebound goes to Davis. Conklin, really get up to 5 6. Conklin and Johnson doing a good job on Walters, keeping her off the offensive boards. Johnson working low, a little turnaround jump. And Barubi down low to get the rebound. Rosati trying to push two on two. Rosati against Johnson. She didn't get the bucket, but she will draw the foul. Connecticut is very tough when they get the defensive boards. They kick it out to Rosati, and she sees the defense. They get their back to her. She knows where the mismatch is right there. 6-4 Johnson not quick on her feet, and she's sliding. Rosati goes right by her. You can see Johnson just cannot recover, and she gets that little scoop shot to create the foul. Rosati is 69% free throw shooter. Number one all-time in steals and assists. Single season and career for UConn. She makes them both. She can give the Huskies the lead. And does. And full court pressure. Davis had the numbers for a second. Now we'll try the pull-up jumper and hit it. Latina Davis out of Winchester, Indiana. Clutch shot for Davis. What the press does for Connecticut is trying to create the tempo to force Tennessee to run and to take a quick shot. And if they miss, then they'll get the defensive rebound and go. Except Winchester, Indiana. It's Winchester, Tennessee. Walters, baseline turnaround. Looked pretty good going to her left end. She can go either way. She's stronger going to the right, but a lot of teams try to cut that off. And she's able to square up to the basket going left. Marciniak, Walters came out on her. Low to Johnson. Over Walter. Missed the shot. Offensive rebound as Conklin had a hand on it, but couldn't control. We've got a timeout on the court. 15-25 to go first half. A one-point game. Being a parent is all about being there. Whether it's a homecoming game or something as important as a college education. State Farm understands that. That's why State Farm Life Insurance makes sense. 
it's a smart way to help secure your children's future if something ever happened to you. See your State Farm agent for life insurance that's right for your family. It'll help make sure that all your dreams will be protected, like helping your children realize theirs. State Farm understands life. Excuse me. Can you drop this back there? Jiffy Lube. With 1,200 locations, we're always there when you need us. And we offer Pennzoil. 3,000 miles to make a smile. America's Jiffy Lube. Jiffy Lube. America's favorite oil change. Connecticut leading 10 to 9 over Tennessee. The Huskies are so good at rotating the basketball on the perimeter to create good spacing as far as that pass inside to Walters. Tennessee playing the high side forces her to go left, which is what they like to do. They know that her strength is going right, but she can hit it going left, too. Carol Walters has been amazingly consistent in the NCAA tournament through 14 games, shooting nearly two-thirds from the field, 17.6 points a game. She has four so far in this one. Tennessee coming out in that zone, spreading it out a little bit. Ruby. She'll try the three. Didn't get the bounce. The rebound to Holtz Claw, who averages nine a game. Davis on the run. Try Johnson again down in the pivot, and she got it over Walton. Johnson with four. I tell you, coming into this game, Pat Summit had to sit Tiffany Johnson down and say, look, you've got to go right at Carol Walters. You're 6'4". You can make those shots. Three-pointer. Sale. 13-11 Husky sails with seven early. Marciniak breaks the press. Davis works at the top of the zone. Marciniak wants it on the far side. Shot clock at seven. Holds ball. Tough shot in and out. Doesn't go in, but it's an awful nice shot. Tennessee is a team that has normally played man-to-man -man throughout Pat Summit's career, and she said we've had to change a little bit because we haven't gotten the post players this year. You've got Johnson and, and Tesh Thompson down low, and so we've had to make some adjustments, and they play a lot more zone this year, and they've got to save those players. That team's shooting well. into the lane. Third tie of the ball game at 13. A little baseline shot for Elliott. Missed it badly. What the zone is creating also is forcing Connecticut to take the outside shot. Marciniak against Barobi. I believe it's a three-second violation against Johnson. We've had an opportunity to see Connecticut play in the tournament, and this is the Chicago triple post offense. Pat Summit has used it quite a bit when a team is playing them man-to-man, -man, and Shemiko Postball is so good at handling the ball and pulling up for the jumper. Trying to pack that zone back in there to make it difficult to get the Walters. Nice penetration by Barubi, but she missed the shot. Kept alive by Sales, but Tennessee's basketball. Kara Walters has been nowhere to be found on the offensive boards. Well, that zone, they're doing an amazingly good job of screening her out of it. And packing it in. There's a reach-in foul as Marciniak tried to drive to the basket. 
Coming up tomorrow, our NCAA Division I Championship in Hockey, Michigan against Colorado College. That's tomorrow at 1 Eastern, 10 o'clock Pacific on ESPN. Amy Duran will check into the ball game for Connecticut. Her last foul was on Carol Walters. And Gino Ariana has said that Jen Rosati and Carol Walters cannot afford to have long stretches on the bench. Rebound to Conklin. And it's a jump ball situation. Possession arrow gives it back to the Lady Vols. Books to get the foul from Sales. First on Sales, the second team foul against Utah. Really give credit to the Lady Balls. They're looking to get the ball down low. Post clock and post up. She can shoot outside. They've done it with Johnson. They're taking it inside to try and create some fouls. It'll be interesting to see how long the Huskies stay in that man to man defense. Post ball, Tennessee's all time leading freshman scorer and rebounder. And the numbers are on her in the NCAA tournament. Only the eighth Kodak All-American as a freshman ever. She strained her knee in the SEC tournament against Alabama, and a lot of people thought she was going to be out, but it's a slight strain, and she has come back strong for them. Lady Bulls by a point. 12 minutes, 15 seconds to go. First half sales with a penetration. Missed a shot and holds ball with a rebound. Tennessee, Mike, really doing a great job defensively forcing Connecticut to take the shots that they really don't want to. They're not great shot selections right now from the other players. And all, they're getting good defensive position, the Lady Balls are, and then they're getting the defensive rebound. Close ball down low, down over Walters. Johnson offensive rebound and a putback. Johnson with six in front of the hometown crowd, and the Lady Balls lead by three. That one won't go. And Tennessee not giving many second chance opportunities. And Connecticut not really working the ball around. Amy Grand was wide open for the shot, but they're not taking any time within their half court set. They have definitely been pushed to the tempo of Tennessee. Marciniak trying to get it inside, takes it in herself and dumps it back for Johnson. Tough pass to handle, but Tennessee gets a break. Shot clock at two. Davis! What a shot under pressure. The senior, that's where she's tough, is penetrating to the basket, pulling up. Biggest lead for Tennessee at 18-13. See if Connecticut gets a better crack at the basket this time. Tennessee's really sagging back right now for Connecticut to get the pass inside, but they've got to look to penetrate against that zone and open things up. Jen Rosati is a penetrator. Nikisha Sales can penetrate. The top two players in the zone for Tennessee are setting way back, and nobody is stepping up offensively for any kind of dribble penetration. Tennessee easily out-rebounding UConn so far, 12-5 through the first 11 and a half minutes. Ball getting a lot of defensive pressure from Sales. Now Rosati trying to stay with Davis. Shot clock down to three. Davis again! Holy cow! Twice in a row, she has six. And Rosati just couldn't stay with her. Twenty to thirteen, the Tennessee fans on their feet. Duran outside with Elliott. Walters triple team. Brandon wants a shot. Rosati will take the three. Doesn't get the bounce. Walters who had 6 7 frame got the rebound. Rosati right back to her. Dumps it off to Elliott. She forced it and missed it. Rosati with a steal at midcourt. Both players go down. No whistle. Now a foul on Walters. Exactly the same time, and neither one has the ball. There would be no foul. He is high. 
not. He feels that his player had inside position off the steal right there. And she did. Rosati goes down hard. And then, to make matters worse, not only is Rosati getting up slow, also Davis, Walters comes down and picks up her second foul on the defensive end. But Rosati's got inside position on that pass. Yeah, incidental contact with two players hitting like that. That time it looked like Rosati had was inside. For the benefit of the replay, I thought uh, in live action it was just bang, bang, but the replay showed clearly she had position. Marciniak hits both free throws, and Tennessee is up by nine on an 11-0 run. Natural ability can only take you so far. Equipment counts for a lot. I'm always checking out new ideas. You have to to stay competitive. That's what I like about Pert Plus. Cleans and conditions in one step. No messing with two bottles. I get great results. No hassle, no fuss. Eventually, we all cross the finish. The winners just find a better way to get there. Pert Plus, great hair, no fuss. Through Saturday, all Craftsman hand tools, power tools, lawn and garden equipment on sale. And every gallon of paint on sale. But hurry, it all ends Saturday at Sears. Announcing the biggest taste hit in pizza history, the new triple-decker pizza from Pizza Hut, with our six-cheese blend hidden deep inside two thin crusts. Wow, what a pizza. Only $9.99. You'll love the stuff we're made of. Some people are doing more business than ever on Fridays. Is Ember deal doable, Donnie? Good. Help your business do more business with Sprint's amazing offer. For one full year, Fridays are free. No, I'll call you back. It's Friday. Every long-distance call you make on Fridays is free. The rest of the week, you get Sprint's great low-flat rate. Okay, so I'll call you next Friday. Call now. 1-800-598-5000. For free Fridays at work. Only from Sprint Business. Tennessee has scored the last 11 to take a 22-13 lead over Connecticut with 9.27 to go in the first half. And here are the numbers. UConn, 5 out of 17, shooting 29%. And they were doing rather well early, but the zone has taken its toll. Who would have thunk it? 13 points in the paint for Tennessee, only three for Connecticut. Give credit to Tennessee, as you said, Mike. They're packing in the middle. They're forcing Connecticut to take the outside shot. Plus, Connecticut looks scared. They don't look aggressive on offense at all. Tennessee mixing up their defenses. Pass too high for Elliott from Rosati, and here comes Marcinia. Holds ball. Got a good look at that one. Walters with a rebound. That's her fifth, but she's been held to four points, and Elliott's been held scoreless. By Tennessee controlling the board, they control the tempo of this game. Walters gets her sixth point. Cuts the lead back to seven. It's always great to have that first option, but in this type of game, Connecticut is going to have to have other players step up and score. Nice double down by Rosati, and she gets the steal. Three on two. Rosati to Sales, bobbled it, and missed it. Had the snowbird and couldn't convert. I tell you, when it's, when it's on top of the lid, it's there, what can you do? I mean, missing lamps, they've missed some easy shots. So don't blame Rosati, what a great play, Not defensively and offensively. What she's doing on that zone, too, she's dropping down when it goes down low, which helps out her teammates. Lori Milligan, number 11, is in for Tennessee. That one was blocked by Walters and then knocked out of bounds for you. This is just great defense by Rosati. She's a little aggressive down there, I'd say. But she comes out a three-on-one break. She brings the defense over to the other side. Nice little layup by Sales, and it's just not falling for the Huskies right now. They're going to have to regroup. That is a big layup, only in the sense of it would have brought their team back together with some confidence. Old ball, turnaround jumper at the baseline, knocked out of bounds. That's knocked out by Tennessee by Passion Thompson. 7.57 to go first half. The Lady Balls by seven. We'll be back to the semifinals in a moment. Hey, if you've got four walls and a ceiling, 
you may have a room for change. Join Joanne Liebler and guest designers for ideas on how to give your room a total makeover. Color is what we're going to pump into this room. See the changes take place through time-lapse video with before and after comparisons. Find out how color, furnishings, and accessories can improve the look and comfort of your home. Watch Room for Change with Joanne Liebler. Fifty years ago, Ed Reynolds started in the furniture business. Ed's family-owned and operated business has now grown to include two locations. Here's Ed to tell you more about Furniture Exchange. We invite you to shop the Furniture Exchange stores in Paris, Tennessee. See our selection of fine furniture and appliances at prices you'll want to pay. Buy on easy terms. We carry our own paper. Free delivery. For all you need, see us at the Furniture Exchange stores. The WTA Tour swings into action with the Lipton Championships. Women's Final, tomorrow at 4 on ESPN. Tradition. It's something established and consistent. It's one of the biggest senior PGA Tour events of the year. The Tradition, presented by Scott's. Thursday, live at 3 p.m., only on ESPN. Tennessee by seven right now. Let's check in with Nancy Lieberman Klein. Nancy? I have one of the real stars of the NCAA basketball tournament, Rebecca Lobo. I know your palms are sweaty watching the Huskies play. It's so much harder to watch than when you play. When you play, you have control of what's going on. I'm, I'm just so nervous. I hope they pull it out. You played every day against Kara Walters in practice. Where do you see the be best part of her development right now? Well, she's a big kid who can just really play. She, she's got she's got great feet. She, when she gets the ball, she usually puts it in the hole. Uh, she's just a very impressive post player. And your pal, Jen Rosati, have you guys had a chance to talk during the season? We talked a little bit, and I'm sure she's just so thrilled to be back here. She's the hardest soul of the team, she deserves it. Well, we enjoyed watching you play the other day against the Ukraine team. Good luck as you head towards Atlanta in 96. Annie, Mike? All right, thank you very much, Nancy. Connecticut has hit only two of its last 11 shots from the floor. The zone has been very effective. Shot clock at one. Rosati will have to let it fly, and it hit the shot clock, so it's a violation. Great perimeter defense by the Lady Vols. Connecticut, normally a team that passes well on the perimeter, they're not getting any releases as far as a high post situation, which might take some of that pressure off the perimeter players. I think Tammy Arnold, the freshman, lost track of the shot clock and really didn't do Rosati any favors by getting rid of the ball when she had to shoot the one second. Johnson kicks it outside. This is Marciniak as we approach the seven-minute mark. Johnson trying to get that third foul on Walters. They've left her in there with the two. They shot 32 percent against Villanova this year. Their lowest. They won that game 62 to 46. Good teams find a way to get it done. Walters was wide open. They missed her for a while. Now they find her and she scores. Carol Walters with eight, and the lead has been cut down to five. And she had four players on her. Here comes the trap. Zadi got sitting at the pick up her dribble right here. They got another steal. Is it Walters? It is. Force a habit. She's kind of, kind of swiping at it. Gino R.M. is just looking. He said, earlier, we must be a dirty team because we get called for a lot of fouls. And I think Carol Walters gets called for a lot of cheap fouls. She, because of the big player that she is, we've talked about this in the past, that maybe people think that she can handle it. And the kind of fouls that she commits sometimes are little really ticky-tack, but she's on the bench with three. 6-17 to go in the half. She has to sit down and holds close. Nearly a 71% free throw shooter. Hits the first one from the line. Yep. So Connecticut is much smaller, of course, without Walters. They don't have the kind of size to replace her. No question. And last year, again, a, a different team in the final. Connecticut had in the first half Rosati, Lobo, and Walters all on the bench with three fouls. 24-17. Here comes the press. Rosati gets it to Sales. Rosati pushes it up. Now what's the first option? There's a steal by Marciniak. Rosati tried to get away from it. Great spin move. 
Michelle Marcillia. Cinderella. Elliott to Rashad. Barubi. Nice drive, but can't buy the shot. Latina Davis down on the floor with a steal. Tennessee just out hustling the Huskies. Ashton Thompson gives it up to Davis. But Ruby does not make the shot, but give her credit for the dribble penetration because it opens things up a little bit for them, but they're not seeing that right now. They're just passing around the perimeter, give credit to Tennessee's defense. The second time tonight she's been able to get inside and not hit the shot. Shot clock down to four. Marciniak back to Davis. She tries to drive. Had that one partially blocked by Elliott. It's a shot clock violation. Got Tammy Arnold, the freshman, just makes a bad pass, telegraphs it. Marciniak steps right in there, and this is what she's known for, the Spinderella move, that hair flying all about. And being a senior, she wants to be in this game. Great first half for her. And Tennessee. Rosati trying to drive a lot of contact, no whistle. Latina Davis, very quick, good defensive position. The Ruby from 15 can't hit it. This will be Elliott coming over the back and picking up the personal foul, the first on the senior from Washington, D.C. A lot of people will talk about screening out off his own and Rebecca Lobo, along with Gino Ariema, wondering whether the Connecticut's will hit any kind of percentage. A little frustrated right there, but I think Tennessee's defense is screening out very well and keeping Connecticut off the offensive boards, only one shot at the basket, and really not a very good shot. Even when Walters was in there, nobody was getting a second shot. Holds ball. Is she tough? Nine points for Shamiqua Holds ball. The freshman from Astoria, New York. She only had nine points in that Virginia game, 10 rebounds. She does so many other things, but big bucket right there by Sales. Sales with a line drive three. Nikisha Sales has 10 in the first half. It's a big drought for Connecticut. Got to make the Huskies feel a little bit better with Nikisha Sales putting some shots down. Thompson got into the lane and missed the shot. UConn certainly hasn't gotten any cheap baskets tonight. Rosati reaching, knocks it away. And it's out to Tennessee. 356 left in the first half. The Volunteers on a roll. State Farm presents the rules of the game. The topic is airborne shooter. If the offense charges into a legal defensive player as she attempts a field goal, does the basket count? My husband and I both work. But when there's a problem with the kids around the home, I'm usually the one to deal with it. But it's not just me they depend on. It's my income, too. If anything ever happened to me, Open State Farm can help make sure their future is secure. If you want to talk life insurance with somebody who knows what they're talking about and knows how to listen, talk to a State Farm agent. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. The Airborne Shooter Rule states that when the offense charges into a legal defensive player, the basket never counts and the defense gets the ball out of bounds. Rules of the Game has been brought to you by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. The impossible is now possible. From the makers of Krylon comes the next revolution in painting. Latex enamel in a spray. A vivid array of color. The ease of a spray with low odor and easy cleanup. The beautiful, long-lasting finish of enamel. Introducing new Krylon Living Color, latex enamel in a spray. The next revolution in painting. Three fifty-six to go. First half of play here with the Lady Volunteers leading UConn by eight points. The first of our two national semifinals tonight at the Charlotte Coliseum. And coming up, 9 o'clock is scheduled to start Georgia and Stanford as we will fill out the brackets for the national championship game. Tennessee has really controlled the tempo of this game. Just a silly foul right there by Amy Duran. 
Marciniak bringing the ball up the court. Amy Duran, 5'11 freshman. That's the 16th foul against UConn. Tennessee has committed a single foul in the first half. Tennessee started out in the man-to-man -man defense and dropped back into that zone. Davis, great baseline drive, but she'll be called for an offensive foul with a hook. Well, Rosati doesn't get beat too often, but Davis is very quick. She looks like she's going right by Rosati. As a matter of fact, Rosati's just holding on for the ride right there, and the shoulder contact was almost forced by Rosati by pulling Davis into her. Must have called the forearm that got into her chest. I'd say she's a little smart defensive player. Yeah, and offensive and everything else. Duran. And look at how low the defense is for Tennessee. Connecticut's got to step in, dribble against that, and open it because when you dribble, the defense will collapse even more, and that makes it easier for an outside shot. That one's knocked out of bounds. Now the officials are going to confer and I believe change the call. It's a good job of officiating as one official saw something the other one didn't. Of course, the Tennessee fans don't think it was all that good. And right from the Tennessee bench with Pat Summers says, hey, you got to call a jump ball on that one. Connecticut without Walters has hit four of 18 shots the floor with her. She hit four of six. Sales, nice drive. Connecticut has missed so many of those shots tonight. What's happening, too, they're having to pull up for the shots. They go too deep. Tennessee is doing a good job, cutting, not cutting underneath them, but cutting in front of them and taking charges. They're not looking to block the shot. They're looking to get good defensive position and draw a foul. Marciniak wants to clear out the left side. She takes Duran underneath the ball at the basket support. But you could tell Marciniak, as a senior, she knew she could take Amy Duran, but got too far into the bucket. But she wanted it, and Pat Stone said, you know, you got to think on that one, Michelle. And she got pulled in the Virginia game, sat for quite a while until she got herself back together. The All-American Walters on the bench with three personal fouls. She's been out since the seven-minute mark. Tough shot inside. Connecticut simply can't buy a break. The ball will be halfway down and comes right back out. Good patience that time. Brewery getting open. She's a very good player with her back to the basket, and the ball just will not found, fall for Connecticut. She is 0 for 5 from the floor. And Carla Berube, who has played well in the tournament, she had 18 points and five rebounds <laughs> against USF and 11 rebounds against Vanderbilt. Ruby hits the first one. They like to use her inside. She has very good post moves. That's the position she played in high school when Walters is out. 75% free throw shooter hits them both. 28-22, and even with all the things that have not gone well for Connecticut, and they're only down by six. Still only shooting 32% in this first half. Get it down to Conklin against the double team. She missed Duran with a long rebound. Tennessee had good position underneath, couldn't handle it. Tennessee has done an excellent job on their transition defense. By the time they get back, Connecticut really has not had an opportunity to run off a defensive rebound. Duran forced that one up. Sales with a follow. Nikisha Sales has a dozen per offensive play, keeping Connecticut in this game. And that one looked like it was going to bounce out. It did. <laughs> There's a rabbit in there. <laughs> Connecticut has hustled its way back to within four. Davis, nice move to get by Rosati. Latina Davis has eight. Is she sweet right now or what? Well, she and Holtzclaw can really put some moves on people. A three. Sales with 15 big points. Take that and cut the lead up. <laughs> She's averaging 31% from long range. 15 points a game. She already has her average here in the first half. Laxton kicks it back outside. The three-pointer from Conklin. Tennessee controls the long rebound. Kelly Jolly, the freshman from Sparta, Tennessee, working outside with Latina Davis. A 10-2 run for UConn. Johnson. Tennessee.
see has been running that high post, and then you cut off of it, off that screen, and they've been running it very well against Connecticut. They're going to, Connecticut is going to have to make some defensive adjustments. The Lee Jean's halftime report coming up. We're down to 30 seconds. Rosati lost at the lane, somehow got it to a teammate, but another loose ball out of bounds to UConn with 14 seconds on the shot clock. Robin Roberts and Mimi Griffin will bring you the top stories on our Lee Jean's halftime report, the excellent adventure of Jennifer Rosati, and we'll preview game two of our national semifinal. And Rosati, for the second time, named the Kodak All-American. Rosati with a three. Boy, she hits the big shots. 32-30. Tennessee with eight seconds to go. Davis wants the last shot. Leans into one, didn't get it. Who was in her face? Rosati, but Johnson with a foul. Johnson has 10. What a first half of basketball. Well, Gino R. Emma wanted the charge right there. Rosati trying to draw it. Nothing there, but look at Johnson inside position with a nice little putback. The officials letting them play. The Lady Vols with a four-point lead over the defending national champions. That's the first half. Let's go back to Robin Roberts. All right, Mike and Annie, thank you very much. An exciting first half. And Mimi, you noticed something even before the game started. That's right, Robin. I noticed that Pat Summit kept that Tennessee Lady Ball team in the locker room until just 20 minutes before the game. It's almost as if she wanted them coming out really fired up and hungry. And then that's the way they played in the first 15 minutes. What we saw in the first 15 minutes was different than the last five minutes of this first half. Tennessee's offensive execution was great. Their defense in that half-court zone really stymied Connecticut's offense. But then Connecticut came on in the last five minutes without Kara Walters. They were up by nine. Tennessee was up by nine in that championship game last year. So believe me, this is still anybody's game. Really impressed with Connecticut keeping its composure there. The shooting percentage was very low, but yet they hung in there, and now they're only down by four. Coming up on the Lee Jeans Halftime Report, we'll take a look at Jen Rosati. She has an interesting per perspective on the Final Four. Also, we'll talk to the two coaches in the second game. Much more to come here on the Lee Jeans Halftime Report. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the NCAA Women's Final Four is brought to you by Nike, who encourages you to participate in the lives of America's youth. Once again, our score at the half, the Tennessee Lady Vols with Shamika Holtzclaw leading the way, leading by four. I come from the generation that always said, well, I'll be married, so I'll be taken care of. My goal in life was to be a beach bum. But at 50, I found myself alone, divorced. And I said, I'm going to open a ballet school. And it was wonderful. I took my money and invested it. I felt great. You know, it's a skill to manage life. Do you know, it scared the pajamas out of me. Natural ability can only take you so far. Equipment counts for a lot. I'm always checking out new ideas. You have to to stay competitive. That's what I like about Pert Plus. Cleans and conditions in one step. No messing with two bottles. I get great results. No hassle, no fuss. Eventually, we all cross the finish. The winners just find a better way to get there. Pert Plus, great hair, no fuss. Once upon a time, three girls went to rock steady for a pickup game. Yo, we got Nick. Lisa is the center of the U.S. women's basketball team. Cheryl's a forward. Dawn is a point guard. Shoot that, Cheryl. Take the jump, Lisa. We'll take it. Take the game. Okay, Nick. Yeah, Cheryl. Ah. Okay, that's the next one. Okay. He can't shoot either. 
And this isn't a fairy tale, so they didn't beat every guy, but they beat enough to say, basketball is basketball, athletes are athletes. Jen Rosati, the gutsy point guard for Connecticut, will do anything for her team. Only five points at the half, her team is down by four. And Jen Rosati is a senior for her. This is it. This is her final weekend of her college career. She wanted to document every last moment, savor the moment here at the Final Four. And I tell you what, she took the job pretty seriously, too. How are you feeling about going to the Final Four? I'm feeling very excited. Yay! Yay! Yay. 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 We are now at Capitol Pavilion, and we even have God on our side. Look, we have nuns. I am. Oh, I've never seen Capitol again as an official University of Connecticut basketball player. Run away to Charlottesville. Yay! <laughs> Change of expression, quick. <laughs> Connecticut. Back here in the Lee Jeans Halftime Report. And coming back, we'll talk about the first half with our two coaches from the second game, Andy Landers of Georgia and Amy Tucker of Stanford. We'll get the thoughts of the first half and also look ahead to their game as we continue here in the Lee Jeans Halftime Report. It's hard to think of something more important to a kid than their bike. That's why State Farm, along with the help of the Good Neighbor, sponsors the Bike Rodeo, just one of the many safety programs we support throughout the country. It's where we give kids a lesson in bike safety to help make sure their bikes are in good condition and to teach kids to ride more responsibly. Because at State Farm, we want to make sure children are safe no matter where their bikes take them. State Farm is there. I've never stopped from age seven of being involved with basketball in some aspect, either playing or officiating. It's been a, a passion of mine since the age of seven. I attended University of Pittsburgh and studied engineering with the intent that you know, once I got out of school, I would be an engineer. I never really thought at that time about you know, refereeing basketball or anything for a long-term type of avocational career. But at that time, I really had no idea that, that officiating would lead me where it's led me. I mean, it's been absolutely phenomenal to me. The purpose of us out there is to allow those players to play the best that they can in, a, in the most fair environment that we can provide. The spectators are there to see the athletes play. They're not there to see me referee or any of my partners referee. I'm out there to allow you to notice the great play of the athletes. You know the feeling you have you know, when you're done with the game and you, you're right on top of it. It's a great rush feeling that you get when you're in the locker room and it's like, yes, you, know, you hit it. This message provided by the NCAA. This halftime report is brought to you by the Jeans. 
And joining me now, the two coaches from our second game, Andy Landers of Georgia and the interim coach at Stanford, Amy Tucker. Before we talk about your matchup that's coming up, I want to get your thoughts on the first half. Kara Walters, three fouls for Connecticut. What kind of problems, Amy, does that pose for the Huskies? I think that'll pose a lot of problems for Connecticut. She's going to have to play a little bit softer, a little bit less aggressively. Uh, it's going to take her a little bit out of the game, I think, in the second half. Well, it seems, Andy, that they can go to Nikesha Sales, a super sophomore. Well, you know, and Nikesha Sales has the athleticism to slash and cut the gaps of Tennessee's zone. And should Tennessee go to man, which is their patent defense, she also has the quickness to break it down. So I see her being very big in the second half. What do you think the two coaches are saying at halftime right now? Amy? Well, I think uh, Tennessee has to be very pleased with how they played. Uh, they mix up their defenses very effectively. You know, if they can get another run going, I think it looks very good for Tennessee. Well, let's talk about your matchup now. Andy, I, I would have to imagine you're pretty concerned about Amy Tucker's size at Stanford. Well, there's no question. Stanford has one of the, yeah. the tallest teams in the country, much taller, much deeper on the front line than our Georgia basketball team, and it does concern me. They have a lot of fouls to give. I'm sure they're going to throw a lot of bodies at us in a few minutes. <laughs> Amy, let's see. Uh, Saudi Roundtree, does that name sound familiar to you? How are you going to stop her? It sounds vaguely familiar. Uh, you know, I think we're just going to do a great job of keeping the ball in front of us. You know, I'm not sure that we can stop her from scoring, but we just have to contain her as much as possible. All right, now I've got to ask you two these questions. There are four underdogs here at this tournament. No one wants to step up and be the favorite. Uh, is it really, do we really have four underdogs in this tournament? Oh, Stanford's the favorite. You <laughs> knew that. Why did you ask a question like that? Of course you're the favorite. We're, we're not buying into that one. The big old family reunion. All right, thank you very much. We're looking forward to your you're matchup welcome. in the second game. Appreciate y'all spending time with us. We'll return with more here in the Lee Jeans Halftime Report. Our score at the half, Tennessee by four over Connecticut. Stay with us, everyone. Much more to come here in Charlotte. For quality lawn and garden equipment, see Oakland Small Engine Sales and Service first. Oakland is an authorized sales and service center for Husqvarna, forest and lawn equipment. From commercial to residential, Oakland has leaf blowers, lawn mowers, chainsaws, and more. Oakland has a state-of-the-art service center to take care of your small engine needs. So, for Husqvarna, forest and lawn equipment, come by Oakland Small Engine Sales and Service off the Big Sandy Highway, home of quality equipment at fair prices. Money market accounts? Just be straight with me. No tricky teaser rate. Just be fair. Long-term performance. Performance I can count on. Make my money work. Working hard, earning big. That's fair. A real rate. Easy access. Is it FDIC insured? I'm ready. Fair sounds excellent. That was an easy decision. <laughs> Craftsman hand tools, power tools, lawn and garden equipment on sale, and every gallon of paint on sale. But hurry, it all ends Saturday at Sears. All set? You bet I am, thanks to you. A few weeks ago with Jesse, I noticed something, dandruff. So I told him about Head & Shoulders. Regular shampoos just rinse flakes away. Head & Shoulders helps prevent flakes from even forming. Because great hair can't have flakes. Super Sunday is just around the corner. Our coverage begins at 6.30 Eastern with the NCAA Championship game. After today, only two teams will have the right to fight for number one. Then at 9 o'clock, the Major League Baseball season opens up with ESPN Sunday Night Baseball. Frank Thomas and the Chicago White Sox travel to Seattle to face superstar Ken Griffey Jr., Cy Young Award winner Randy Johnson, and the AL West champion Mariners. It's the Major League Baseball opener Super Sunday on ESPN. Excuse me. Can you drop this back there? Where? In Nebraska. Since 1979, Jiffy Lube has serviced over 100 million cars. Jiffy Lube's signature service. And we offer Pennzoil. 3,000 miles, you make us smile. America's Jiffy Lube. Jiffy Lube, America's favorite oil change. 
Ocean Spray supports the Women's Sports Foundation. Women craving to be their best. To do their best. To drink the best. Craving Ocean Spray juice drinks. And that's cranberry at its best. Ocean Spray. Drink away! To be a student athlete, I have to be a leader. I know that my actions affect my teammates, my family, and my friends. If you use drugs, quit. Be a leader. Don't use drugs. If you or someone you know needs help or information concerning drug abuse, call this toll-free number, 1-800-662-HELP. This message provided by the NCAA. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the NCAA Women's Final Four is brought to you by Prudential. Live well, make a plan, be your own rock. For the second half tip, let's return to Ann Myers and Mike Patrick. Back at the Charlotte Coliseum, sell out crowd to watch Tennessee lead Connecticut 34-30 after one half of play in the national semifinal here in the Women's Championship Tournament. Welcome back to Charlotte, North Carolina, everybody. You have to feel Connecticut must feel good the way they played, being down only four in the first half. But Tennessee got some tremendous production on the offensive end of the court. No question. The senior freshman punch, one-two punch, they did a great job. Latina Davis, we talked about her senior leadership. She is so great at penetrating. She also has a spin move, and Shamiko Holesclaw is so calm, not only post-low, but look at that little Michael Jordan fadeaway. And she has been tough. She also gets to the free throw line, which is very beneficial. Here are the stats. Connecticut shooting well under 50%. Tennessee just under 50%. But look at the rebounds. 23 to 12. Tennessee 7 to 2 on the offensive boards. Right now, let's check in with Nancy Lieberman Klein. Nancy? Thanks. I tell you what, in the first half, I thought Pat Summit did a great job of switching defenses. As you said, Tennessee primarily goes man to man, but the zone really did bother the Huskies. Uh, We'll see what happens in the second half, but I'd stay with that. The Huskies normally a pretty good outside shooting team, but the zone is creating pressure on the perimeter. They have to do a better job of attacking the zone. For Connecticut, Nakisha Sales had 15 points. And for Tennessee, Tiffany Johnson, playing in her hometown, had 10. And she had nine shots in that game. The most she has taken this year is 13 against DePaul. The other big stat that really stands is Jamel Elliott. No rebounds, no points. Give and go to Rosati. Walters with the follow. Can't get the bucket, but will get the foul. The numbers on sale, six out of 11. The rest of the team only shot five of 18 from the floor. Only a 59% free throw shooter, just under 59%. But in the tournament, she has been clutch when it has counted. I've seen a couple of players shoot free throws like she does this year. She actually takes her arm in front of her and turns it sideways, which is, has to give it a funny spin on the release. Way to go, Michael. You know, no, usually I say they've made 23 in a row. That's when they miss. The lead is three. Latina Davis. This is old school. Nice ball movement. Johnson wide open and bricked it in 15. Very nice touch pass by Davis down low. Rosati pushes it up the court to Berube. Sales goes into the lane, can't hit it, but the follow is good by Elliott. She gets her first two points. And it's a one-point game. And her first rebound. Her idol is Dennis Rodman, and her goal every game is to try and get 10 rebounds. Rosati pushing it up towards Connecticut with a chance to regain the lead. Tennessee led by as many as 11 in the first half. Walters moves inside to score. Nice post move, and Walters has 11. Full court pressure by Sales against Marciniak. That was a great move by Walters. She was right underneath the basket because Conklin is really trying to push her out of that box area. Shot clock already at 11. Conklin tries a runner, had it blocked. Even with 
three fouls. Walters reached, reached up and got a hand on it. Rosati lost possession of the ball, couldn't reestablish her pivot. Foot. Tough call for Rosati. I thought she stopped and held the ball. The back official called the travel. Here's a nice play by Walters. Look at what Conklin's trying to push her out, trying to push her out away, away from the basket. And she gets caught underneath the baseline. Shows you her agility for a 6-7 player. Didn't even bother to switch hands. Just forced it up with the right and got it. Johnson to the cutting hose claw for the bucket. Lady Ball's backed up by a point. Hose claw has 11. She averages 16-3. when a team plays them man-to-man. -man. Obviously, Pat Summit switching up the defenses again. You see Walsh is moving around, moving around. It's good possession. That's a nice pick on Marciniak. And you'll see Rosati come around the top. And she makes a nice dish off. Holes spot ended up guarding Rosati off the switches. And Tiffany Johnson with that disbelieving look on her face after the foul was called on her. That's her throw. Free throw for Elliott, who is the best free throw shooter on this club, 80.5%. And only Rebecca Lobo has had more rebounds in Connecticut basketball than Jamal Elliott. Seesaw ball game right now. UConn by one, 17.30 to go. Nice job against the press. Davis, an outstanding ball game. No points in that first half. She's a three-point threat. She also is a great post player with her back to the basket. She has worked hard on defense. with Conklin, a little turnaround right there against Walters. Make sure there was space enough to get that shot off. And there's a little spin move by Barubi. Holtzclaw, a little hand on the wrist. Barubi converts the three-point play. Holtzclaw picks up her second personal. Connecticut up by two. Matchup zone by Connecticut. And Walters really has to be careful. A nice block right there. attacking this zone. Nice block right there by Walters. A gutsy block, but they have also not only attacked the basket offensively, but the players have gone for the Lady Balls to the offensive glass. Conklin, a 69.8% free throw shooter. Gets that one back to back three point play. The old-fashioned way. Sales, nice drive. Sales has 17. Well, this has been an intense game. Rosati reaches in another steal. You'd like to protect Walters down low in that zone, but Rosati just drops down low as soon as the ball goes inside. The Ruby loves to go to the right. Conklin got a piece of that one. Sales tries for the steal. Marcelino goes right by him. And then Sales with a silly reach in. Wow. Well, it may have been silly, but with what we've seen with some of these bodies being hit and then to come back and call that. Nonetheless, a good move by Marciniak off the spin. Sales is coming from behind, and Marciniak basically spins right into it. I don't think she seen, sees Sales there. It doesn't look like there's hardly any touch whatsoever. Baseline jumper, Latina Davis. She has 10. The Lady Ball is back by one. You get the feeling this will get out of the last possession. It's Tennessee back in their zone.
up limping. I believe they're going to call that one Passion Thompson. That's her first. We have a timeout. 15 14 to go in our first semifinal of the evening. It's a three point game. I come from the generation that always said, well, I'll be married, so I'll be taken care of. My goal in life was to be a beach bum. But at 50, I found myself alone, divorced. And I said, I'm going to open a ballet school. And it was wonderful. I took my money and invested it. I felt great. You know, it's a skill to manage life. But you know, it scared the pajamas out of me. This is a nice soapy head of hair, and this is a nice soapy head of hair. At Ramada, you can get your hair clean. At Holiday Inn, you can get your hair clean. You can shampoo here, or you can shampoo here. But a shower here will be a better value for your dollar than the shower you'll take here. Maybe that's why last year, 23 million people chose Ramada over Holiday Inn. All things being equal, we're better. So call 1-800-2-RAMADA. Announcing the biggest taste hit in pizza history, the new triple-decker pizza from Pizza Hut, with our six-cheese blend hidden deep inside two thin crusts. Wow, what a pizza. Only $9.99. You'll love the stuff we're made of. Through Saturday, all Craftsman hand tools, power tools, lawn and garden equipment on sale, and every gallon of paint on sale. But hurry, it all ends Saturday at Sears. Tennessee with a three-point lead, 15-14 left. The Major League Baseball season opens up with ESPN Sunday Night Baseball. Two-time most valuable player Frank Thomas and the Chicago White Sox travel to Seattle to take on superstar center fielder Ken Griffey Jr. and Cy Young Award winner Randy Johnson Sunday night on ESPN. It's back, and this year we seem to care. Isn't that nice? It's great that everybody's excited about it again. Rosati, who was the spark plug for this Connecticut team, Walters, her sidekick All-American. Right now they're down by three. Nice inbound pass to Rosati. The bucket and the foul. She is so quick. What a nice play coming out of bounds. Rosati just cutting off and going to the basket right side lots of times defense really gets caught behind they've got to try and hustle as much as they can to cut off that right-handed player but ninth out of bounds play out of the timeout by Gino Arnaz. Latina Davis picks up her second personal foul and Tennessee had gone so long into the game with only one personal and now they have two players with two and Tiffany Johnson on the bench with three. We're tied again at 45 for the fourth tie of the game. That's a travel on Holtzclaw, and I'm not sure that Pivot could ever left the ground. I agree with you. She's just so talented and so long, and it just it looked like with the knees bent, you go up in the air, you don't leave the ground, but the decision sometimes. It's the old anticipation call. Rosati being called by Davis. College Sports Magazine called her the best defender in women's basketball. The Ruby with a miss, Mark Siniak on the rebound. The Ruby, there was no rotation at all on that shot. Shot. Can't hit it. The rebound 
throw to Jamel Elliott. Tough shot, but also when Holzclaw takes it, it almost looks like it's going to go in. Connecticut, Connecticut comes back. I think what's really hit play by them is that when there's a turnover or a defensive rebound, they really kick the ball down court. You see Hash and Thompson setting some screens, getting position, getting position, kind of hopping around in there. And Walters really can't do anything about it. And it's best just to play like that and just work for position, not create any fouls because it's going to hurt her teammates if she fouls out of this game. Well, Rosati is so intelligent. Anytime somebody throws a trap or anything unusual at her, she knows exactly where she's supposed to go. Sales with a three. Short Marciniak with a rebound. Nice dump down and Thompson with the bucket. The foul will be called on Barubi. Great Lassen, dish off. Nice pass. Great dish off by Lassen. She's able to beat the defense on the baseline. And you see the weak side help. Sales slow getting down court. You see the weak side help. Nice pass inside. And Rosati gets all ball. Foul may have been on Hunt. No, it is on Barubi. Her second. Thompson, the junior from Philadelphia, Mississippi. 71% free throw shooter missed that. She leads the club in both free throws attempted and made this year, but the offensive rebound goes to Latina Davis. Probably the biggest surprise in this game so far is how the Lady Balls have controlled the backboard, leading Connecticut on rebounding. Sales just reached in and picked up a third personal foul. Andy Landers, George's coach, doing a little advanced scouting. Uh, Lady Dogs won the SEC conference and then got knocked out in the tournament by LSU. And then in the SEC tournament, Tennessee won it. Tough, tough shot. Renee Laxton. Her first two, the lead is four. Laxton just flipped the defense. Sales had to pull up because of the defense and will draw another foul. And Passion Thompson wondering how she got called for. That's her second. And that was the seventh team foul. See, Keisha Sales, who you know Ariama feels that that's one of the best players he's ever coached talent-wise. She's able to take the ball to the basket put it on the floor, penetrate, to pull up for the jumper, and we've, we've seen she can hit the three-pointer. Last year, the Big East Rookie of the Year. This year, second team all-conference. And throughout this tournament, we have seen her play some outstanding basketball. Averaging better than 17 points a game in the NCAAs this year. Tonight, and the lead is down to two. There was one stretch where Tennessee had some breathing room when they led by 11. Since then, it has been scratch and claw for both clubs. Jolly at the point. Conklin, tough turnaround jump shot. Conklin with nine in the second half. The lead's back to four. It makes it tough when teams can have other players step on, up in the second half, which they haven't contributed in the first half. Walters on the lob, double team, tries to power her way through. The ball's out of bounds. Nice defense by Laxton from behind. They really held their position. Good hands by Walters, though. It's a tough pass to get inside because they're just sagging in on her. Thompson just really banging her a lot. Walters likes the contact, but watch her hold the ball. Really a tough pass, and, and she gets away with getting the ball back to them. Duran just nicked the rim on a three. Great save by Sale. Shot clock is they down to four. It. They didn't reset it. It had hit the rim. And a three by Rosati. Hello. Rosati with 11. Tennessee has been running this high pick up top. Marciniak counters with a three. And they've been very successful as far as being against that man-to-man -man defense of Connecticut. Rosati splits the defense. they call a foul on Rosati. That's her first. 
It's been a beauty. 11-19 to go. A four-point lead for Tennessee. As a new parent, my hours can be pretty unpredictable. I think a lot of the young parents that come into my office and talk about life insurance have a lot of the same needs and have gone through a lot of the same things that I've gone through. They're really looking for somebody to tell them about life insurance, to talk to somebody they trust. When people leave my office, I think they feel that, hey, this guy doesn't just know about life insurance, he knows about life, too. State Farm is there. If you let me play. If you let me play sports. I will like myself more. I will have more self-confidence. If you let me play sports. If you let me play. If you let me play. I will be 60% less likely to get breast cancer. I will suffer less depression. If you let me play sports. I will be more likely to leave a man to be. If you let me play. I'll be less likely to get pregnant before I want to. I will learn. I will learn what it means to be strong. To be strong. If you let me play. Play sports. If you let me play sports. Tennessee by four with 11.19 to go in the ballgame. This is the first of our two national semifinals. Georgia and Stanford to follow. Of course, this is a rematch of last year's championship game. And you look at these two coaches, they're going to be together again next week where USA national team will play a group of college all-stars. And Gino Ariema and Pat Summit will be coaching them. And Jen Rosati will be on that team with a group of seniors. Cherie Sam from Vanderbilt, Saudi Roundtree from Georgia. Eleven fifteen in this game, a four-point lead for Tennessee. Marciniak and Jolly in there together. Jolly, nice drive to get free, but she missed the shot. Thompson with the follow. Thompson has six with Johnson on the bench and Aldo. Oh, Walter's really getting muscled inside, but she goes for the whole ball. Rosati keeping the dribble alive. Walter, there's the double team by Thompson and the steal. Well, Walters had the ball and she took a dribble which she didn't need to and then all of a sudden the defense, defense collapsed on her and she had nowhere to go. She's got to get rid of the ball a lot quicker with the defense collapsing and her teammates have to help her out. She brings it down. She becomes very vulnerable. Laxton tries to run her. She will draw the foul. Lady Vols throughout this game, Michael, have probably run their offense continuously a little bit more so than can Connecticut has, in the sense that they come down, they're very patient in their offense, they have attacked the man-to-man -man or the zone that the Huskies have set up against them, and I think that that has given them the edge, because not only attacking, looking like the more aggressive team, it's all this will enable them to get some offensive rebounds. Absolutely. Laxton hits the first, the last foul was on for Ruby, her second. Laxton, a medical red shirt a year ago, and now Walters will get a breather with 10-15. She's played the entire second half with the three personals she picked up in the first half. Laxton hits them both. 60 to 52 Tennessee. has missed a lot of point blank opportunities. That's right. They ran the play that they wanted to. Nice dish down by Marciniak, but Conklin missed. And also, the Huskies just don't seem to be getting a break either. The shot clock did not reset. It's down to 10. 
Jolly gets a screen, wheels into the lane, and a shot over Rotani. Nice shot by Jolly, her first two points, and the lead is 10. Gino Oriama wants to talk about it with 9.24 left. Multiple personalities. Some get therapy. Oh, yes. Tracy Ullman gets her own HBO comedy series. Tracy Ullman is a comedic smorgasbord. Tracy Ullman? Yeah, I think I'm suing her. Snippy little freak girl that types all the parts and no one else gets a crack at it. I'll take you on, Tracy. She's got chutzpah and, oh, my God, I got mucus on your lens. Tracy takes on on HBO, the only place where Tracy can be Tracy. Sixteen years ago, I began Master Muffer and Blake. My wife, my sons, and my daughters have all worked hard to build this into a family business with 11 locations doing muffers, brakes, shocks, hitches, and alignments. We'll give you a free written estimate. Our qualified technicians will do the job right the first time using quality parts and all at a fair price. Come by Master Muffer and Blake today. The business at Fair Dealing Build. Hey, Dan. What's wrong? Hey, Grant. Uh, bad show. Hair looked bad, teleprompter went down, made some mistakes on some highlights. I got something to cheer you up. Thanks. Thanks, Grant. I appreciate that. No problem, man. Second biggest lead of the night for Tennessee, up by 10. Kelly Jolly, a big time player as far as minutes for this Tennessee team. She's averaging in the tournament over 73% from the floor, and that's one of the reasons why very much under control. Connecticut known for its field goal defense in the top six three years in a row, first two years. Tonight they are allowing 53.1% from the floor. Give a lot of credit for that to Tennessee. A lot of those shots are coming from the inside. Sales has been quiet lately. Walters is back in the game. At the high post though. For Ruby. Rosati is outside. Shot clock down to seven. For Ruby hits the jump shot. She has nine. She's an excellent three-point shooter, but hasn't stepped out there much. Thompson had it blocked. Walters, and then the reach and foul. No, walk. Lakeisha Sales can't believe it. She feels she's pushing past someone who's all over the official, saying, come on, you got to call a foul inside. Walters looks like, and Gino Ariama is just laughing, well, Walters looks like she comes up with a clean block. Again, Tennessee doing a great job getting their center open. Good block by Walters, and then the turnover by Connecticut. Tennessee's lead is eight. Tina Davis. Sales and Rosati, a little two on two fast break. Sales hits the shot. She has 21. And just like they did in the first half, down by double digits, Connecticut comes roaring back. What a clutch shot by Sales with the defense right underneath it. Laxton with the drive. She'll draw the foul from Jamel Elliott. Here's a pass. The sales and she stopped. Davis trying to draw the charge. A little bit of contact. The officials have been letting it go most of this game. She comes up with the two. But to talk about the perimeter defense of, of Connecticut, because they're coming out, the pass is being able to go inside, spacing-wise, to the post players. That's why they're wide open. It's a one-on-one -on -one situation with Walters. And Walters, if she can keep coming up with big blocks, might be able to put the Huskies back into it. And it's so wide open, it takes you a couple of seconds to get any help after she has the ball. By then, it's gone. Blackston at the free throw line. And the one and one, and she missed. Elliott with a rebound. And Tennessee's only hit one three-pointer, the one by Marciniak, so they have not hurt Connecticut from the outside. 
Walter stepped through, missed the shot, got it back, put it into the foul. Second effort by Walter. Is that a big time rebound? They get her the ball inside. You see Thompson up on high. Good weak side help by Conklin. She misses it, but she keeps the ball high. And a big time play for Connecticut. And the Connecticut bench is pretty happy too. They need as many points as they can right now. Walters already with a double double. All you have to do to get Connecticut to play brilliantly is get up by 10 points against them. They go crazy. Walters with a chance for a three point play. Too strong. The lead, however, is down to four. And we're under eight minutes. Mike Patrick and Ann Myers with you along with Nancy Lee and Clyde. Glad you could join us in the national semifinals. Conklin with a miss. Mitch just sails for the rebound. An outside shot by the Lady Balls in the miss. Most of this game, their bread and butter has been the inside game. And Davis and, Davis and Holtzbaugh have not touched the ball for them. Shot clock does not reset on the block. Baruga loves to drive, and she can't buy a shot tonight. Holtzclaw picks up the personal. That's her third. So both teams starting to get in a position where one more on a star could make a huge difference. And Pat Summit said coming into this game, we have to stay focused for 40 minutes. We can't play 35, we can't play 30 or 38. We've got to play 40 minutes. The problem in the three previous games they've played has been the last two. They have really come apart. <laughs> Elliott misses the second free throw. Conklin with a rebound. Three-point game. Well, the three players that were scoring a lot of points in the first half for the Lady Balls are Davis, Holstall, and Johnson into the game. They really haven't made a lot of noise here in the second half. Holstall, line drive, miss. Rebound to Rosati. She's bumped by Davis. I think they need to make harder contact so the fouls won't part. Yeah. That could be. That's three on Latina Davis, and we're in the bonus. Remember, it never reaches the double bonus in women's basketball, so the one and one always keeps a lot of adventure in this game. UConn will be at the free throw line when we come back at 62-59. I come from the generation that always said, well, I'll be married, so I'll be taken care of. My goal in life was to be a beach bum. But at 50, I found myself alone, divorced. And I said, I'm going to open a ballet school. And it was wonderful. I took my money and invested it. I felt great. You know, it's a skill to manage life. You know, it scared the pajamas out of me. You know, FedEx and the Dream Team have a lot in common. They're fast, we're fast. They've got moves, we've got a few moves of our own. We both spend a lot of time in the air. They get called for traveling, we travel when we're called. They're masters that grab, eat, apply, and slam, and jam, and foul line dunk. Well, okay, so they got us there. FedEx, proud sponsor of the USA Basketball Dream Team. Neat, huh? Excuse me. Can you drop this back there? Where? In Nebraska. Connecticut on a 7 nothing run. They have cut the 10-point lead to 3. 6.52 to go in the ballgame. 62-59. Lady Balls, our credential storyline from a sold-out Charlotte Coliseum. UConn has now hit 50% on threes. Sales with 21 points. Tennessee 
killing Connecticut inside and holds the ball with 11 points and five rebounds. You would think maybe you'd play some inside defense and let him shoot from the outside. Yes, most definitely. Rosati at the line, one and one. From what I've seen in the women's tournament this year, if you had to pick a player to take a shot to win a game, I'd pick number 21 standing at the line right now. I mean, her reputation isn't as a great shooter, but I'd put my money on her. She will not lose. She, boy, she goes down with the ship. Barubi commits the personal as they try to trap. That will be three on Carl Barubi. Gino Ariano. Well, it's a freshman. Speaking I know. Freshman. And as a freshman, Jen Rosati came in and said to Gino, you know, we could run the break a lot faster if I had the ball in my hand. <laughs> and Gina was smart. A lot of confidence for an 18-year-old, <laughs> isn't it? Latina Davis. Who has not scored in the second half, along with Tiffany Johnson. Missed the front end of the one-and-one. One. Almost unbelievably, Connecticut with another chance to regain the lead. Down by 11 in the first half, down by 10 in the second half. Rosati open for three. Offensive rebound, Elliott. Walters wants the ball. They can't get it to her. Great pass. Rosati with a perfect pass, and Carla Barubi has 11 points. Good patience by the Huskies. They're looking for Walters. The defense is keying in on Walters. Barubi just snuck down on the baseline. When all it took was Walters to take a couple of steps outside, and Rosati just rifled the pass into her. That one is over the basket support and out of bounds to Connecticut. Rosati very patient. You see Walters cut across the key, which opens up that weak side with the Ruby cutting across the baseline. And Rosati getting everybody together, get back on defense. Six minutes in counting. She has been fun to watch for four years. She is terrific. Sales got away. Second half without picking up an additional foul. 
Marciniak tonight, outstanding game, short on the second one. Huskies by one. Zadi hasn't been out for a second. Oh, no. Sales had her defense beat, but Ruby looked for the perimeter pass, and Sales took her eye off it. Mistake down the end, that's what's going to count. Who's going to make the most? Every possession becomes more dear as we approach 330. has got a good screen from Thompson. And they're going to call Carol Walters. The last three years, look at the records for these teams, Connecticut and Tennessee, the top two winning percentages. The other final four member on that list, Stanford, they played the second game against Georgia. Louisiana Tech was number one, but they've been knocked out of the tournament. Called the foul on Elliott, which is three on her, and a break for Walters, who looked like she might have been the insulted party. Marciniak hits the next one. Everybody on your program with three. But hold your breath, nobody has picked up a fourth yet. I think what Connecticut has to do defensively is Tennessee is just driving in the basket. You've got to lay off and force them to take that outside shot. Tied at 68. Connecticut calls a timeout with 322 to go in the ball game for the right to advance to the championship game. Back in a moment. First, I said no, because the only time anyone messes with my hair is after winning the Super Bowl. But I really do have a serious dandruff problem. So I did it. I took the Dinerex test. What they say is true. The Dinerex side really did tingle. Nothing with head and shoulders. Selsun Blue, T-Gel, Head and Shoulders, and Dinerex all have effective dandruff medicine. But Dinerex has an extra ingredient that tingles. Makes your scalp feel fresh and clean. Now I use Dinerex. No more flakes, no more itch. You won't see me scratching my head in Miami. Dinerex, the serious dandruff shampoo. In the world of credit cards, the traffic is getting pretty heavy, and it's easy to get confused by all the complicated new card offers and restrictions. But people who know where they're going use one card, Discover Card, with the cashback bonus award, the smart rate program, and no annual fee. For a positive impact on your finances, use the Discover Card. It pays to discover the card that pays you back. Use it where you see the Novus sign. Taking your act on the road? With Connect First from Northwest Airlines, you get treated like a king for the price of coach. You pay coach, you sit in first class, only on Northwest, baby. <laughs> ESPN's exclusive presentation of the NCAA Women's Final Four is brought to you by Lee Jeans. We have had 18 lead changes in this game. Right now we're deadlocked at 68 322 to go in the game. It will be Connecticut's ball when we resume play. This is the sixth tie of the game. Jennifer Rosati leads her club out on the floor. They want the ball in her hand. When she played in the AAUs, the 11, 12 year olds, they won the gold. Then she played in the 13, 14, they won the bronze. She was crying. She went in the bathroom, her mom said, what's the matter, we got her, we got a bronze. And she will not lose again. She got the gold last year. Nice drive by Sales. Sales with 23, one short of her season high. Now Davis will handle the ball outside. Almost lost it. In and out on the jumper. Johnson with a follow. That one was blocked by Walters, and they're going to call Walters for her fourth foul. Now, I'm telling you, that is a Pat Summit call right there. She's been talking to the officials all game long, especially in this second half, that last possession that we saw where Walters had a big block. Pat Summit was right on the officials. Kira Walters comes up with a nice, clean block. Good offensive rebound by Dana Johnson. It's all ball right here. But give credit to Pat Summit about being on the officials. Johnson misses the free throw. She is a 60.9% free throw shooter. Shooter, rather. Walters, of course, played the entire 
second half to this point without picking up an additional first. One point lead for UConn. and 10 even though she missed about a third of the first half in foul trouble and she'd been averaging almost 20 points in this tournament you know she's frustrated you got to root your team on Kate Starbird against Alabama in the regional finals semi-regional finals for Stanford fouled out with 27 points they went overtime and beat Alabama well, Tina Davis with 11 she can give her team a three-point lead with a second free throw. And does. And she'll wait for Rosati. Walters can only hope for her teammates. Well, there's plenty of time. Connecticut doesn't have to panic. Sales nearly got caught up in the air. For Ruby. to go in the game. Tennessee with a three-point lead and the basketball. Tennessee is in here courtesy of a tremendous comeback that they had against University of Virginia in Charlottesville. It looked like they were dead in the regionals and somehow they reached down and found enough to come back and win it. Who would have ever thought 14 points in the first half by a Tennessee team coached by Pat Summit? Only 18% in that first half and she did a tremendous job as far as bringing her team back and they kept asking the players, well, what did Pat say at halftime? Well, we can't say. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure we couldn't say either. But they only had 14 points total in the first half. And they were down by 17 in the second half. It looked for all the world like they were dead. But that's why this program has won three national championships. No question. Their backcourt did a tremendous job. The senior leadership of Davis and Marciniak helped them come back. 
12 points and 14 points, both of those two players, and most of them in the first, second half. 102 to go in the game. The lead is three, of course. Coming up in our second semifinal, Georgia and Stanford for the right to meet the winner of this game. And the championship game will be right here on ESPN Sunday at 6.30. It certainly couldn't be a better game than we have seen so far tonight from these two teams. And for Connecticut, the last two possessions really have not been good for them. Mistakes, whether Ruby was fouled on the baseline or not, it goes back over to Tennessee, the possession before, out here with Sales making the mistake as far as the ball being turned back right. over to Tennessee. So those little mental mistakes are what, going to, is what is going to carry you over to the next game. It may come down to Rosati having to take more of the pressure on herself and take the shots. Connecticut out of timeouts. Both teams in the one and one. Walters hoping against hope that this is not her last game of this season. Marcin Anthony inbound. One minute. Trying to set up the trap. Because they had the chance. Tennessee trying to use as much of the clock as possible. They really don't have to foul. They'll get the ball back. And then after they, they get the next possession, then they'll start fouling. But you think, well, they're wasting down to five. Davis with a miss. UConn basketball. Now you gotta go. No timeout. If you look for the three, that's the way they're playing it right now. Sales has the range. Go. That's what I meant. And now they got a foul, though. 15 seconds to go, and Duran took her time getting there, but finally committed the personal with 12.9 to go. They let three seconds go off the clock, and that's, that's a mental mistake right there because they come down, one point, Rosati, they're looking for the three because the time is running off the clock. You can tell that Sales and Duran and Rosati were standing behind that three-point play, that three-point line. Tennessee doing a good job defensively. Davis comes up, forces her to drive a big bucket by Rosati, but then right here, you got to stay on the out-of-bounds pass, so no time runs off the clock. Three seconds wasted. Marciniak to the line. She is four out of six tonight. Tennessee as a team has hit only 65%. She's an 81% free throw shooter during the season. If she makes the second one, it's a three-point game. And again, Connecticut score. And again, Connecticut having to come back down, and then they will have to shoot the three. someone else or take it herself has to give it up sales That was a fitting way for this game to finish regulation time. It has been a tremendous effort on the part of both teams. And what a clutch shot for Sales. You knew Rosati wanted the shot, but she didn't find an opening. She did find Sales and coolly drained it. Nikisha Sales, a sophomore, as you said, Big East freshman player of the year last year. Last year wide open and she could feel it and then you got to come down and play defense so Marciniak was able to dribble up but Sales knew it was going down she has equaled her career high of 26 points and this certainly brought a smile to the face of Carol Walters who was fouled out of the ball game but she knew there was three seconds left I tell you, Marciniak had a good look at the basket. Rims off right the front. This junior class for Connecticut has 99 wins. The senior class, 117 wins in 134 games for Jamel Elliott and Jen Rosati. Has this been a great game or what? It really has. 
back and forth, a chess match, and I, I think both coaches have done a tremendous job as far as coaching their teams and, and making adjustments. Tennessee has stayed within their offense, and we're starting to get the players that brought them the lead in the first half back into the game, and Connecticut give them all heart in the second half, especially with their leader, Jim Rizzotti. Tennessee has lost three straight games to UConn, all huge games. They lost uh, the number one ranking when Connecticut beat them last season. Then they lost the national championship to them. This season, they broke their 69-game home streak. I mean, they've added insult to injury, but this might be the worst one of all if Connecticut beats them again tonight. And most people in the women's game will tell you it's not possible to beat Tennessee four times in a row. I don't know. After three, why not? <laughs> That's right. The times are changing, but Pat Summit, in the 15 years of the NCAA tournament for the women, nine times in the Final Four. This year, Connecticut has played only once in overtime, losing Tennessee 2-0. And that was their very first game against Louisiana Tech. Tennessee has the ball first with the five extra minutes on the clock. We've got three basketball. Reach in and a steal. Nice play by Peruby. Peruby let the offensive player come right into her, and she's very quick. She's lower to the ball than Walters was and just stuck that hand in there. Rosati against Davis. trying to make something happen nearly stolen by Marciniak. Sales with another tough shot and can't hit it. Had to force one off balance as the clock is running out. People still catching their breath here at the Charlotte Coliseum from the end of regulation. starting five that do not average in double figures. The holding foul away from the ball is going to be on Holtzclaw, her fourth. Durant, a 71% shooter, will go to the line for her first trip tonight. Got the bonus. Duran stepped up in that Vanderbilt game, the two of four three pointers that kind of turned things around for Connecticut. Nailed both of them, 77 all, 344 to go, and shall I say it, the first overtime. Might be here a while. with a tough shot to hit it. Both teams are running the same offense. The Chicago triple high post. They're coming off the, the high pick at the top of the key, and Tennessee has really been able to take advantage of it. A little bit better than Connecticut dribbling the offense. Marciniak has 18. There's Duran, got wide open. Nice pass from Berube. Sweet. 
who's going to make the mistake? I was just thinking the same thing. They have played so brilliantly down the stretch in overtime. There it is. Thompson went one way. Coughlin's pass went the other. Rosani looks over at Gino Oriama. Finds out what he wants to do. Under two minutes to go in overtime. That one's tipped away. Nearly stolen and Rosani is going to get a push. And she knew she did it, but that's a good foul because Marciniak would have had an easy way in going the other way. No question. Pat Summit looking over, but you got to give the fault to Nikisha Sales for the pass. Doesn't telegraph it. When you play against an aggressive defensive team, you've got to make some fakes. Look for back doors. Rosati was hanging out there, and Sales put it right there where Mar Michelle Marciniak knew exactly where they're going. Well, Rosati and Marciniak, they will go at one another. I mean, you'll see forearms, hip checks, you name it. Marciniak, 18 now, 19 points. 82-81 Tennessee. Scored over 3,000 points at Allentown Central Catholic. Transfer from Notre Dame. Rosati, nice long rebound. Can't say enough about that young lady. She's a tremendous player. Duran open. Want to get the ball to Rosati. Now they go to Sales. Nice hit fake down to the baseline. Missed the shot. For the rebound and that call of foul. Oh, what a tough call. Official standing behind. I, I'm sorry, I gotta say something on this one because I think it, it's the ball was tied up and the official is blocked. Two outside officials are seeing the action. Carla Berube is in there, so is Sales. Conklin does a nice job getting the rebound, but you, you can see both oh, players holding the ball and the back ball. officials calling. That's that's a tough call. I mean, you've got to call a jump ball on that. The foul is called on Elliott. That's her fourth. You either call it jump ball or you don't call anything at all. Couldn't agree with you more. Conklin will get the bonus. 69% free throw shooter. When she left the state of Indiana, she was the all-time scorer in that state, men's or women's basketball. The games, the, the games that will be won at the end of defense and free throw shooting. The lead is three with 122 left. Timeout on the court. We're in overtime. It's a three-point game. Natural ability can only take you so far. Equipment counts for a lot. I'm always checking out new ideas. You have to to stay competitive. That's what I like about Pert Plus. Cleans and conditions in one step. No messing with two bottles. I get great results. No hassle, no fuss. Eventually, we all cross the finish. The winners just find a better way to get there. Pert Plus, great hair, no fuss. In overtime, Tennessee leading by three, 122 left to go in the game. Coming up between games, we'll have Robin Roberts and Mimi Griffin bringing you uh, a report on Tara Vanderveer, men's, men's final four update. Of course, those semifinals are tomorrow. All the highlights of all the action. It's a three-point lead here. And coming up uh, after those halftime festivities, or between game festivities, the second half of our bracket, Georgia and Stanford for the right to meet either Connecticut or Tennessee. This has been one of the best games we have seen all year on any basketball court anywhere. I really give credit to Tennessee as far as from the very tip of the game as far as how aggressive they were offensively and, and control the tempo of the game. And 
and then give credit to Connecticut in the second half, how they pulled together and, and really worked to get back into this game. Tennessee with five players in double figures. Marciniak leading the way with 19. Ruby with that drive and then put it up with a right hand and missed it. She had a chance. I think what she was trying to do is draw the foul, but all you got to do is with the left hand go in, you get your two points. Now Connecticut needs its defense. And Tennessee can really get some needed room if they can hit a bucket on this possession. Don't let them penetrate. That's where they're effective. Shot clock at seven. Marcinia can't get inside. Now she goes baseline again. Cut off. They're not going to beat the shot clock. Tennessee might have taken a little bit too much time off in that half court to get things going within their offense, but Connecticut did a much better job, I think, on that possession right there, cutting off the baseline and not letting Marciniak go all the way. Jennifer Rosati has already checked with Gino Oriema and knew all she wanted to do was get in the front court for a timeout with 34.1 seconds left. What's the strategy that you like here? Do you like to go for the three at this point? No, and that's why I don't coach. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's four second difference on the shot clock. There's 34 seconds left in this game. Does Connecticut take the three-pointer quick? Do they make it? You know, there's lots of variations that they can go. You go for the two points, you're down by one. Tennessee's going to get the ball back. They can hit a three or, or get the shot. They'll still have the lead. Connecticut has hit that three-pointer with Keisha Shales. I don't think you can run too much time off the clock because you've got to have enough time in case you miss the shot to either come back and play defense and foul or get the rebound and put it back up. Well, especially if you go for the two. I think if you go for the two, you have to take the shot pretty quickly because you're relying on them to then come down and hopefully not make the one and one. No question. You're exactly right, Mike. And I think also it'll be interesting to see how Connecticut comes out of this timeout running a play. I, you know, we've seen so many coaches in the past that out of a timeout, you score quickly, you set up the, the offensive players, set screens, and, and come around and get your two points. Right. And I think that they have to score quickly and go ahead and get two points and come back and play defense. Tennessee has done a very good job on the free throw line, though. The one weapon they do not have, Carol Walters, who had fouled out of the ball game, so they can't rely on her. And certainly, UConn tonight from long range has been very, very tough. They have hit seven out of 14 shots. The biggest thing is whether they can get their players open on the perimeter. You look at Sales, Duran, Rosati, and Elliott can also hit the three-pointer. So they definitely have the players out there to hit the threes. And Barubi, once in a while, can hit it. Barubi, actually, from a percentage standpoint, is the best one on the team. She just doesn't take that many. It shows you, look at two of four from three-point range. Tennessee is not an outstanding outside shooting team and yet Connecticut has allowed them to get the ball inside. This is Sales, gives it up to Rosati. Sales as they run a weave outside. Now they're gonna need the three, I think. Behind the back, dribble by Sales. Now you got a foul. And Sales reaches out, commits her fourth with 17.5 seconds to go. This is exactly what happened at the end of regulation. And only, especially on defense, too, Connecticut has to be aware of how the ball is coming out of bounds. Two seconds, 2.5 2 seconds off the clock, and they let them get the ball in bounds to Marciniak. But what a great move by Nikisha Sales, the freshman, going behind her back, opened everything up. They looked like they were dribbling a lot on the perimeter. Defense just kind of broke down right there. But now out of bounds, there's plenty of time to set up on defense. They let the ball come inside to Marciniak. You've got to guard her and let somebody else shoot free throws. Marciniak has hit 7 out of 10. She missed her last one. This makes it a two-point lead. She is an 81% free throw shooter on the year. All SEC academic student. The final for the Naismith Awards is a tremendous free throw. It's the second one. Now Connecticut must have the three, unless you feel there's enough time to get the two and foul again. Rosati gets it to Sales, under 10. Rosati. They got a team. Tiffany Johnson tipped it. She blocked the shot. Charlotte Coliseum. 
They can smell an end to that three-game losing streak to UConn. I think they were trying to get the ball to Nikisha Sales. Rosati looked open. Tiffany Johnson at 6-4 got a piece of it. Rosati had a good look. Michelle Marciniak sensing the chance to go to the championship game tomorrow. And the tears start welling up in the eyes of Carol Walters. It's a three-point lead. Davis will go to the line for the front end of a one-and-one. One. If she makes it, it's over with 3.1 seconds left. If she misses, UConn still has another chance. And if she makes the front end of the one-and-one, one, you, you go ahead and miss the second one and let the time run out. So, tend to, so Connecticut doesn't have a chance to set up on an offense because usually off a missed shot on the free throw and getting the rebound, teams have a tough time setting the play up. You should be a coach, because no. in my opinion, if you make the front end of a one-on-one and, one and it's a four-point game, I could care less what you do with the second one. It won't make any difference. Davis, 71.9% shooter. And Tennessee has a four-point lead in overtime. They have suffered mightily at the hands of Connecticut in the last three meetings. It has cost them dearly, including a national championship. But not tonight. That's it. The Lady Bulls have won a competitive title game. wins her 595th career game in 22 years. And for Carol Walters, a repeat national championship was not meant to be. She fouled out of this game and could only watch as her teammates cannot pull it out. Our Nike player of the game, Michelle Marciniak. 21 points, only two below her season's high. She hit five out of eight from the floor, seven rebounds, and five big assists. That's the story in overtime. 88-83, Tennessee. Let's check in with Robin Robin. All right, Mike, thank you very much. What a way to start our exclusive coverage of the women's Final Four. I tell you what, the defending champions did not go out without a fight. It was tough to go into overtime without Carol Walters, who fouled out with other two minutes to go in regulation. But I tell you what, Tennessee, a well-played game, well-deserved victory. Robin, that's exactly the point. Not just Tennessee, but Connecticut as well. This was an incredibly played game. Very low on the turnovers. Offensive execution and defense were the difference for Tennessee. Tennessee, of course, had lost three straight times to the Connecticut Huskies, but not this time. And Ann Myers is down with the Happy Pat Summit. Yeah, congratulations. A great victory going into the Final Four, going into the final game right now against Connecticut. A great game. What was your game plan coming out offensively? Well, we really wanted to go inside early and, and really test their interior defense. I thought that was key. I thought Tip Johnson really stepped up and played hard for us. We wanted to go to Abby Conklin early. And Abby did not score well in the first half, but stepped up in the second half. Guard play was big for us all night. Talk about your senior guard backcourt. Davis just really started things out. Holesclaw had a very good first half, but Marciniak really controlled things in the she, second half. She did, Annie. She controlled tempo. I, I thought she really pushed the ball better in the second half than she did in the first half. But she led our basketball team. She made big plays. She got other people in a position to make big plays. But... When you have a senior backcourt, you hope they can come here, relax, and play like seniors, and those two definitely did that. Well, Connecticut came back in the second half, but you've been able to come back against Virginia. You were down 17 against them. What were you feeling when they, Connecticut did come back? Well, they went on that, what, 9-0 run, 10-0 run, whatever it was. I thought 
Right now, we have to make big plays. I put on the board, we have to be a big play team. And I thought we came back and made big plays after that. We didn't panic, fortunately. Uh, we changed our defense some, and I thought our changeup was, was good to us. Well, you stayed focused for 45 minutes in this game. I know. I didn't know, I didn't know that would happen, but thank you. Okay, Thanks congratulations. A lot. Robin, back to you. All right, Ann, Pat, thank you very much. Boy, did Pat Summit look relieved or what? She's won over 500 ball games, but this one has to be very sweet for the second consecutive year her Lady Balls are in the national title game. And Robin, Pat, it looked like she needed to be towed off after that game. She was so relieved and excited. But credit her team. She laid out the game plan, and they executed. All right, Mimi, we've got the second game still to come here. We'll also hear from Dick Vital, get his thoughts on this Final Four. A lot more to come here. We'll talk to key players from this exciting overtime win. We'll hear from Michelle Marciniak, a big star in this game. And we'll also hear from the national team coach, Tara Vanderveer. Stay with us, everyone. We're coming back. My definition of a good neighbor is someone who's there ready and willing to help you at your time of need. That's why State Farm is proud to work with many organizations like Neighborhood Housing Services. I think State Farm supports organizations like NHS because they help an old neighborhood become new again and alive again. And I see people that are certainly, they take pride in, in ownership of where they live. I've seen the results and I've seen what can happen in a community with the combined efforts of NHS and State Farm. Hey, why watch the Final Four alone when Sears can put you with a friend? Make that three friends and Final Four legends Cheryl Swoops and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Shoot, shoot! I could have made that shot. But not on your couch. The game! Come to Sears by March 30th and register to win four seats for next year's men's or women's Final Four. Beside Kareem and Cheryl. Sure beats sitting behind them. Stanford and Georgia, that's our second game coming up for. That's going to be a hard act. You're a hard act to follow. Michelle Marciniak joins us now. She had 21 points in the first half. And before this game started, Mimi was kidding about Tiffany Johnson being a homegirl, being from Charlotte. This is your homegirl right here, being from Allentown, Pennsylvania. That's right. This is definitely my homegirl. Michelle, <laughs> congratulations. Your contest with Connecticut have been a real nemesis for you, going against Jen Rosati. What was in your mind before you came out tonight? Well, we just wanted to um, make sure we kept it present tense and... Uh, not worried about the the last three losses but you know you know focused on uh, uh, tonight's game and I, I'm, I'm just so proud of my teammates for uh, pulling it out and really staying together you're not normally a scorer you're normally a distributor of the basketball for Pat Summit but tonight you were a scorer did Pat tell you that she needed that from you no she didn't she just said <laughs> you just did it anyway <laughs> <laughs> she just uh, you know told me to attack you know play uh, extremely uh, extremely aggressive and um, to just, you know, keep cramming it down Walter's throat. And, uh, you know, I think a key was to, to keep her in um, early foul trouble and, um, you know, take her out of the game. And then we sort of had our way, so-called, um, after she went out. And I just kept on attacking. And, uh, you know, we, we did different things this year during different games. And, you know, sometimes I was a scorer, sometimes I wasn't. But that's the, the uh, neat thing about our team this year. That is pretty neat, Michelle. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. I concur very much. We've got uh, two special guests with us, Michelle Marciniak's parents, standing down with our Nancy Lieberman Klein courtside. But they enjoyed the game, huh, Michelle? Let's go down and see what that's to say. I tell you what, Robin, with families come anxiety right here. I have Whitey, Betsy, her mom, and also Miranda Michelle after the star herself. Anxi anxiety waiting for this to go through overtime or not? Oh, we wish it would have ended that regulation. <laughs> it was a lot. But I tell you what, everybody played a heck of a game. Uh, they all pulled it together and did one heck of a job. We're proud of all the girls on the court. Now, I mentioned before this interview that Pat Summit would not have her team lose four times in a row to UConn. You've been around her enough. Your thoughts on what she's done for the program and Michelle? 
Oh, well, Pat's just been an incredible coach. She certainly knows what she's doing, and that's why Michelle is here, because Michelle wants to coach, and boy, she's learning from the best. Okay, she starts out at Notre Dame, then she makes that transfer. I mean, how traumatic was it for you to have her just shift gears like that? It was really rough. I have $600 phone bills, Nancy, to prove it. It was tough. It was really hard on everybody, and especially Michelle. Well, now you have two Final Fours and hopefully a national championship That's for right. Tennessee. We got one more game to go, and I, we're going to be here with bells on tomorrow with all the fans in back everybody, of us. Everybody, the well, kids played great. Thank you so much for stopping by, Robin. Thank you. All right, Nancy, thank you very much. Uh, your mother was talking about $600 phone bills. You seem like to be a close family. I mean, what does it mean to have that kind of support from your family? Well, my parents, I think, you know, from the time that I was real little, they uh, they supported me and they supported my, uh, you know, my brother and sister also. And um, they've been down here. They've only missed about five or six games this year. And, you know, we live 10 hours away. So sometimes they flew, sometimes they, uh, you know, drive. But um, I love them to death. And, and they've really been a key to, to uh, who I am today. Michelle, you got a day off of rest because of how the Final Four is this year. How big is that to know that you don't have to play tomorrow and you can wait until Sunday and play? I, I think it's key as far as preparation is concerned because, you know, last year we didn't have that uh, day in between. It's key for preparation and um, to relax. You know, we, we get a day to rest our legs. And, I mean, you know, especially a day like today that we went into overtime, um, I... I think it'll be a good mental day and a good physical day for rest. Okay, well, you deserve that day off. Thank, Thank you, Michelle, for joining us again. 21 points in the overtime win over the Connecticut Huskies. We will come back.